Hello, my name is Maria Colgan. I'm one of the product managers for the Oracle database. And in today's video, I'm going to give you some SQL tuning tips. If you want more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Imagine the California sales report is suddenly running slow and you've been asked to find out why. Where do you start when you've been given a task like this? Well, the first thing you want to do is find out what the SQL statement that they're using behind that report looks like. And it looks like it's a two table join between sales and customer. And in our case, there's an equality predicate on joining those two tables together. Now, based on the names of the table, I'm going to guess that these are larger tables with an equality predicate. I would have expected a hash join, but the actual plan we got was nested loops and it's actually got a very low cost. If I force the plan I was expecting, it turns out to be nine times more expensive which is why it wasn't chosen by default. Now, since we didn't get the plan we wanted and we've got a performance problem, let's find out what additional information we can get about these tables. First off, the sales table has a row count of 1 million rows. So our assumption that it was a large table turns out to be correct. On top of the sales table, we have an index that's being used called sales cost bix, which is a bitmap index on the customer ID. And then the second table in the query, the customer's table has a row count of 10,000. So these are not small tables. So why aren't we getting the hash join that we're expecting? Let's take a closer look at the actual plan. I'm going to use the gather plan stats hint in order to get more information about the execution stats. And I'm going to use the additional format parameter, all stats last, so that when I look at the execution plan, I see an E rows and an A rows column, estimated number of rows, actual number of rows. And you'll notice there, there's quite a big discrepancy. And you might be wondering, why are the cardinality estimates so wrong in this case? Well, when you're looking at cardinality estimates influencing a join, you want to start with the table on the left hand side. And in this case, that's the customer's table. Now we do have a where clause predicate on the customer's table. And you'll notice there that it, we're wrapping a function around the cost state province column. And when you do that, the optimizer has no idea how that function, in this case substring, is impacting the values inside in that column. And so the optimizer must guess the cardinality estimate instead of using the base column stats to work it out. And in this case, it made a guess of 100. Now you might be wondering, why 100? A uh, very good point. Well, it, let's go back and look at the base table statistics again. The customer's table has a row count of 10,000 rows. 100 is 1% 1 of the total number of rows in the customer table. And oftentimes you'll see the optimizer will commonly use a 1% or 5% guess when it isn't able to accurately calculate the cardinality estimate. And so be careful and watch out for that in the future. Let's tell the optimizer how that function affects the column values so that it can make an accurate cardinality estimate. Now we have two options for doing this. One and the more traditional approach would be to create a function based index that uh, represents that expression or that function wrapped column. That will definitely give the optimizer an accurate set of statistics to work from, but it will come with the overhead of having to maintain that function based index. Now, if we end up using that index as an access path, it may be worth it. Alternatively, we can create extended statistics on that function wrapped column so that we get all the benefits of an accurate cardinality estimate without the overhead of having to maintain that index. And extended stats have been available since 11G, so there's really no reason you can't take advantage of it in your production environments today. To create the extended statistics, what we need to do is call the DBMS stats create extended stats function, and we pass there the table name and the expression that we want to create the extended stats on. The output of that is a system generated named virtual column. And that's what you see being displayed there. That's why I'm doing the select star from Jewel. So we can see that system generated name for the virtual column. If we look under user tab call statistics after we regather stats, we'll see that system generated virtual column name and we'll see that it's got all the necessary statistics, things like number of distinct values. We even have a histogram on it. So if we are to rerun the query now that we've created those extended stats, let's check and see what plan we get by default. Surprise, surprise, we're actually now getting the hash join as we expected. And if we look in the rows column, we're getting a very accurate cardinality estimate for both the customer and the sales table, allowing us to get the right plan 
without having to do anything like add hints, etc. So just a couple of things to remember. Try and avoid putting a function on a table column in a WHERE clause predicate. Wherever possible, use the reverse function on the constant instead. If you can't avoid it, then only use the function-based index to create the cardinality misestimate if you also want to use that index as an access method. Otherwise, you're much better off using extended stats. Now, in 19C, you'll start to see things like adaptive plans or statistics feedback trying to help in situations like this. And depending on how off the cardinality estimate is, some of those safety nets may be able to catch and fix the problem for you, but I wouldn't rely on those. If you see this kind of pattern in your particular workload or in your queries, you are better off to put those extended statistics in place to solve the problem. Thanks for joining me today. You can get more information about the optimizer and SQL tuning on this YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Or you can check out the official Oracle Optimizer blog or take a look at my blog, sqlmaria.com or check out the Oracle documentation. Thanks for joining me today. Music